Welcome to Talking Point with Steven Taylor. It's good to have you along. And today, speaking about the movie, uh, Nume Skoli, uh, which is out in cinemas at the moment. And I'm speaking to the writer of the movie, uh, John Fredericks. John, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for taking the time to be here. Uh, tell me about, before we get into the movie, tell me about you growing up. Where did you grow up? I grew up in, I was born in Kyoto town in Athlone in 1945. And that, that place was a, a place of boots and buckles. It was a violent place. I was born in the very last street. Behind us was a bush, and behind us was, was a, a refuse dump. So the refuse dump was my playground. Now, my father was illiterate, so he would always bring comic books home, and book to me to read. And in the afternoon after school, when the, all the wagons must pass our house to go dump their load. So I would jump on the back of the wagon and go to the, to the dump and there would scavenge for books or anything of value, of a resale value, you know, mm. with all the other scavengers and, and the sick dogs and, you know, and the sound of the horses and the wagons and the council, people bantering it always other. So you grew up poor? Yeah, I grew up poor, but poor was normal mm. because everybody was poor. Yeah. I was also born in the apartheid years. So apartheid for me was normal. Mm. Right? My parents knew everything that's right and wrong, the rules and regulations. But with the reading, you know, it opened my mind to other worlds. And then I realized, but this is not normal. Mm. You know? But something happened on the ref refuse dump when I was very young. And that thing that I buried in my mind for many, many years, for decades, you know? So I was always the best storyteller on the corn at night. In the school, I wrote the best uh, uh, compositions and stuff like that. But this incident that happened, you know, it's like, you st it's, why do you join gangs, mm. right? So it, it, for me, it starts with hide and seek, cops and robbers, cowboys and crooks. You decide who you want to be. You want to be the bad guy. But you know, many years later, I. I sat down man, and I thought about, you know, where did you go wrong, you know? And thinking about it, that, that incident that lied so deep in my mind, mm. it came to the surface and then I remembered. That's why I went wrong. And in, in my life, I saw nobody is go ever going to touch me again. So John, tell me, what, what was the reason, okay, you wrote the movie Nume Skoli. What was the reason that you landed up in going to prison in the first place? What, what was the incident? What happened? How did you land in jail? You see, when I was 14 years old, I got my first, that time you get corporal punishment. I remember that. Back early in the 90s was when it stopped. I, I also used to get corporal punishment at school. Yeah. Don't tell my mom. Yeah. <laughs> but we got corporal punishment at the, by the court. We were sentenced to that. So you got a police record, and automatically you were labeled a scholar. Really? Yeah. From school? Yeah, but then I had to leave school. Yeah. You know, because I, I'm, I'm branded. Mm. So it went on like that. And, and the next year, I got two more cases. But it's not really, okay, it is serious. Mm. But thinking back now, it wasn't actually that serious. Was it minor things? What, what was it for? Mostly assault, okay. stuff like that. And uh, it, was it from drinking? Did you drink? Or was it just normal assaults that took place? It was, you see. Sometimes self-defense or? Yeah. I never got looked for trouble. Yeah. But you see, we were a group. We grew up together. You see, as you grow up, we become older. You hang at the same place. Mm. Even if you go work, you come there, you, you're still gonna hang out. Mm. So we would sing and we would chill and what what, and the other gangs would like to pull us in. Mm. And we just want to belong to a gang. And we got assaulted many, many times. Now, do you know that most of the gang's names come from films? Really? Yes. Sure. So we went to go watch the young ones. You know, the young, yes. Cliff Richard. Yes coming down the road singing the young ones and stuff yes, like that. Yes. And the next day somebody wrote on the wall the young ones. So immediately, you're not the ordinary group anymore. Yeah. You're the young ones. 
If something goes wrong in the area, it must be the young ones, you know? So we signed the pack, like, like a family. Mm. We're gonna stay and stand together. Like, if you get, you, you get caught, you take the rap. That's it, you don't squeal, you take the rap. That's the oath you took? That's the oath. Wow. Yeah. And that oath, it's like when you're in, mm. you're in. You can't get out. And there's no way out. Right? Mm. So, and that oath came back to haunt me. Oh. John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a break. I want to come back and see your, your prison, how you landed up in prison, and how the actual movie uh, came about, you writing the movie. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, you are watching Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. Thank you very much for taking the time out. If you want to interact with the show, please do. Uh, at Stephen Taylor SA on Facebook and Twitter, and of course, facebook.com forward slash Talking Point. We'll be back with more about the movie, No Me Scully, and we're chatting to John. We'll get to more about that in a moment. Welcome back to Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. We are in conversation with uh, John Fredericks, the writer of the movie uh, Numescoli. John, thank you still for being here. Tell me about your experience, your two years in prison. That was the main reason why you, you wrote this movie, Numescoli. Did it have such a big impact on you, being in prison? It had a huge impact on me, being in prison. I remember the first day I came there. You know, you strip from your fancy clothes. Really? They strip you naked? Yeah, I strip wow. naked. They smack you around also at the same time. Sure. And then you get your prison clothes, the short pants. No shoes, no socks, no underwear, flimsy shirt, threadbare jersey, and a jumper. So yeah, the brick, the brook, the brook, <laughs> the, the pants were small. So I had to hold up the upper one hand, and I had my cut cup in the other. You know the cut cup? My bread? Oh yeah? My awful loaf of bread with the jam on top. But my nose was running. So I had to use this hand with the bread to wipe my nose. So they make me so small. No belt, no handkerchief, no nothing. This is prison. This is not your mother's house. Mm. And uh, they tell you that when you go there. Yeah. Sure. Your, that's not, not your mother's house. This is prison. Sure. So, in prison, well, I was I grew I was seventeen years old. Now there wasn't juveniles on one side and adults on one side. No. You all together. You all together, and you come into that section with all those hardened criminals. Was that tough? My bro, imagine, they're looking at you. You have to wait by the door. Like stand up Timela, wait by the door. So they come to take you off. 226 and 228. Now they check you out, who are you? And right there, you get smacked around, yeah. right? But now, tonight, you sleep here tonight, you know? But I'm a sore to myself, nobody is, if we're going to touch me again, right? So now, the air was, you know. So I knew I'm not going to take anything of any convict, nothing, because when you take something, they want pay back, mm. you know. And uh, so you were alone. No, none of your friends were there. My one friend, were two of us who okay. got sentenced. Okay. You know, and uh, so he took the wrong turning. He ate others' food, uh, he smoked with him. Uh, and the first night they gave him bank of tobacco. And the guy took his palm, and he read his palm, and he was like, then he realized it, oh. You know, but I was watching him. I, my eyes were telling me, what are you doing, my friend? Yeah. But it was too late for him. He's still alive now? No. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure, okay. He was hanged by the neck. In the prison? No, he got a death sentence. Oh, really? Back then? Three, wow. of, three of my friends, three of them. Wow. He was one of them. Sure. That's from childhood fantasies. Yeah. Ended up on the end of a rope, you know. But in prison, like, you have to, if they want you to pull you in the number. Now you, can, you can be at 26, 27, 28. But the 28, it can also be, there's two kinds. You can be 
a concubine. What's that? A wifey. Oh, okay. You know, we can be a, okay, we can be a wifey. Okay. You've got a good life. Yeah. Right? Don't worry. Nobody will worry you. You've, you've married. Mm. But otherwise, if you haven't got in hard times, mm. because, but I didn't want the number, because I know the number will follow you for the rest of your life. Mm. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're married or anything. If the number comes knocking, you have to go, mm. because you sign with allegiance. They have an oath towards that. Yeah. Prison gang, stuff like that. So now, what now? So now they want to make numbers. They sit down, they're going to make numbers tonight. Right? Two, 28, 26 26s. And my lawyer was a 27, old man. Sure. He's my lawyer. Sure. <laughs> so now, like, we decide, you know, I must take the number and this one say no. This one want me to be like a, a 28. But I know what he want. He want, he want something else. Mm, mm. And the other guy, he can now, he already proved himself like he's a soldier. He's a Maruban, mm. like a 26. Man. So this guy, my lawyer said, he's a 27, he said, give him a time, let like, talk. So I talk, I said, I can tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so it yeah. took you 15 years to write the story for Nume Skoli. And I know that recently they had a screening at Polsmore Prison, the first time ever yeah. that a movie before the time has been screened in a prison. You were there? Tell me about how that experience was. Oh, it was amazing. You know, because I used to tell, I used to work in prison afterwards, yes. later years, right? Yes. Creative writing facilitator. And uh, I was used to telling stories to prisoners. But when they watched the movie, you see, I was checking with the authenticity of the story. Yes, to see if it had a true reflection of yeah. what, yeah. My friend, that hardened convicts were in tears. Really? They were in tears. Wow. Like everybody was in tears. Wow. I cried every time I see the movie. Wow. You know? So, why do you want movies of, of, of people who died on the gallows? Mm. You know? But in the story, you will find the empathy with them. Because it's like the question being asked for decades, why do you join gangs, mm. right? So now I give you quite a few reasons why you join gangs. And then you won't see them as that they really, or they really earned the death sentence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There was no leniency, nothing. Like today you can go, to a court case, you've got to have a lawyer. Mm. They give you a free lawyer. They do. Not that back then. If you couldn't afford a lawyer, that's it. Sure. You know what I'm saying? But now you're 71 years old now. You've, the movie has come out, it is out at the moment in cinemas. What made you tell the story? What, was, what is your goal from telling the story? There must, there must be a goal that you have. You know, it, this is a story about hope. I want to give hope, man. Like, for me, there's no third or fourth chance. There's always just the second chance. Yeah. You get the second chance, and you mess up, and you get another chance. That's it, another second chance. There's no third chances. It's always about second chances, yeah. you know? And uh, We have one life. We, we need to, yeah. You see? And it's about um, don't give up on your dreams, yeah. you know? Uh, like, dreams never die. Right away you come from. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you come from. Mm. Dreams never die. You know, what is it you really want to be in life? Yeah. But now you're caught up, right? And for you, that is gone. It's never going to happen. Now, that is my story. There's a lot of people's stories to tell. There's a lot of talented people in the townships, mm. but they don't know to do what to do with this talent, you know? Mm. Like myself. I just wrote, but, and I threw it down there. I never... But this story haunted me. It haunted me for most of my life. And with my first documentary, I went to, to Italy. And my, my friend there told me, John, you are not telling the story. Tell the story. And this is the story. And I started writing it in the year 2000 in Italy. Sure. And um, so she, in Italy, the people in the know uh, African colored. Mm. They don't know what kind of person I am. And they thought I was an Apache. Sure. Because I had the card 
with a, a photon taken from a, from the wall in Nova Park of the American gang, gangsters, a gangster with his uh, feathers, that's wood of feathers. So I put it on there, I put it on my card. So they think I'm Apache. <laughs> so this guy comes to me, I believe you're an Apache. I go to him, I say yes. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Big Spirit. <laughs> now that in Italy they don't cut the names. That guys don't cut here. Wow. They, I don't think they call me. They just make so. Now my ear was long and they said, John, don't cut you here. You mustn't cut you here. You know, so yeah. I look like a patch. I look like an Apache. <laughs> John, I know we've got uh, Taryn standing by. We're going to get to her in a moment. But I want to thank you for your time, sir. Thank you, thank you for coming in. And I uh, wish you all the best for the movie. Um, and of course, it is at the cinemas at the moment. Why should somebody go watch it? Just let, just let our viewers know why they should go watch the movie. Yeah, this is not about gangsterism. This is not a gangster story. This is not about the number. This is about the dream, you know. And for people, for parents actually, to see, to watch over their children, you know, to be aware of what's happening in their lives. It starts with reading and writing, spending time with your child, mm. you know, because my friends were illiterate. They never went past uh, um, primary school. Sure. They never even finished primary school. Sure. And they never read, you see. So reading opened my mind. So that is important, for children to read. I worked in prisons with youth who part grade, got grade 10, but they can't read and they can't write. Now what is that? What happened to that? What happened to that? Mm. The years he spent in school. Mm. So the movie is about hope. It's about hope. Okay. Really. John, thank you for your time, sir. Uh, we've got Taryn Weingart standing by in a moment. It is Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. We will be back in a moment. Welcome back to Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. It's good to have you along. And we've got Taryn Weingard chatting more about uh, Nume Scully, the movie that is out at the moment. Taryn, welcome. Thank good you. to have you here. Thank you for taking the time out. So tell us about yourself in a nutshell. Who is Taryn Weingard? Who? Okay. And am I saying your name right? Yeah, you're okay. saying my name perfectly. Okay, okay so Taryn Weingard is an artist actress. Um, she is Cape Town uh, girl, born and bred. Um, and studied drama, uh, performance at UCT, and has just been working in the arts industry for about two to three years now. Has you done theater and stuff like that? Yeah, I've done, I've done a few theater productions, but um, Scully was my first. And how was that experience, eh? <laughs> what happened? How does, how does one get the call? Do you have to audition for that or how does it work? Okay, so you have an agent mm -hmm. and then your agent kind of just sends you to as many um, auditions. Okay. Um, depending on what, if you fit, fit the profile on, or no. Okay. Yeah, so I got sent to this audition and you, yeah, you get sent to many auditions yeah. and then you just... Is it tiring? Like, oh, not another one. Come on. Well, no, because you want the job. Yeah, you want the job. <laughs> you know, that's but, the end goal, right? Yeah, but I mean, if, when you are maybe rejected, that is hard, many right? times in one week, it can be it can be oh. tough. Yeah, but it's okay. I mean, you just you just say, you know, there are so many reasons as to why you learn certain things and you don't. Mm. You know, so you just stay positive and you just do the best that you can in the moment and. That's how, how old school you came. Like right now, you look really young, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm 24. I'm 24. 24. Okay, that's cool. All right. So you're kind of just starting out. This is your first um, film, Nume Scully. Mm. Well, tell us about your character. Tell us about tell us about your character in the movie. Okay, so I play Jenny, and she and A B. That's John's wife. That's John's wife. Yes. Okay. So. Um, John's character's name in the movie is A.B. Okay. Yeah. So I'm A.B.'s childhood sweetheart right. since like very young. So the movie tracks a f 
couple of years actually. Okay. So you see them when they're younger and like uh, teenagers, and then you see them when they're older, like in their twenties, so to speak. So I played Jenny in the in the twenties, and Jenny is um, very much in love uh, with with Abram, but she can't always um, be with him because of his choices and yeah. you know being involved with gangs and stuff like that and these things keep them apart so she works in the library she's a kind of a simple um, good girl with a, a head screwed firmly on her shoulders and yeah she in the end you'll have to see whether or not they yeah whether they stay together. Make it, oh yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. Was it, was it challenging um, for you to do, um, being your first movie, I'm sure that you were very nervous, right? Like on set, you were like, oh my word, like, were you like that or was it just like, were you, did you just get right into it? It was crazy. Yeah. No. The, the, <laughs> uh, the first scene we shot, Darren, it was actually the, the library scene. Um, where after years he comes out of prison and then they yeah. they meet again. So there's all this tension, you yes. know, between them, things unsaid. And um, I just I I just never experienced anything like that before. The filming process, I mean. Okay. It is just a tactic. Camera lights, yeah. like makeup, um, s stitched me into things. It's just wow. happening like ta 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 ta. You know, it's at a totally different pace and rhythm yeah. to. Oh, you've done theatre before? To theatre, yeah. Yeah. So this was your first movie. Um, what is next for you? What is What have you still got planned, like, in the future? Well, I'm just going to keep on going to auditions, you know, and um, I'm busy s studying at the moment, so I'm doing my master's, so that's what's keeping me All right. up at night. Okay. As, as you do, right? Is, is studying important for you, do you feel, getting into um, this I, type of medium? Well, hmm. It depends. Okay. It depends. Um, some people kind of have the natural tenacity to just mm. go into auditions, you know, and kind of bulldoze it. If you can find an agent who will take you on without the um, training, then that's great. And there are so many like yeah. smaller courses that you can do. Yeah. But I think studying was very beneficial for me and okay. and still is because theater really made me sweat and um work for my craft put in the long arms exactly <laughs> no really yeah. yeah and in a, so in a safe like in a safer space yeah okay i just did um christoph Lachter's at the few god um oh, nice. a month or so ago Lucky. yeah you enjoy that it's that, different to movie, was, right? Because there's actual people there. It's like, yes, yeah. yes. That's what's amazing about theater is that you get a kind of energy feedback loop from the audience. I've always heard that. Is that real? Is that something like when you're on yeah, stage, you feed off the so of the audience? Yes, wow. because you get people actually. I don't know. It's almost like the energy in the space changes. You know, if you're doing a romantic scene, it's just like for the audience, you can start feeling everybody kind of oh, getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a kiss scene in No Me Escoli? Nah, I can't tell you that. No, man, come on. Nah, I can't tell you that. I was going to ask you if, it was, did you, if you liked it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a choice? No, no, no. No, DJ is very gracious, so. Okay. He was, that, yeah, he was wonderful to work with. Okay. And you got starstruck, no? No, I mean, I know DJ from theater school. Oh, right. You okay, know. he's from Cape Town. No, he's from Namibia. Oh wow! Yeah, he was. Yeah. Um, I think when I, when I was in first year, he was graduating or something, or he'd graduated already. But I'd seen him on. Okay. I'd seen him on, um, on campus. Okay, so Taran, tell me, uh, why should somebody go see Nume Skoli? Someone should go see Nume Skoli because it is an authentic South African story, and also because it traces this man. Abraham's journey and I think many people can relate to being in difficult circumstances mm. in South Africa and being labeled mm. as a certain something and not everybody has got the resources or the tools or the skills in order to escape those circumstances um, and so why I think Nume Skoli should be seen is because it's very, it's, it's encouraging, story. it's yeah. inspiring, yeah. And, and, and it proves that it can be done. Mm. You can get out of a tough situation and, you know, John is just a shining beacon of hope in that yeah, regard. Yes, yes. Are you on social media? Where can people yeah. find you? I'm on social media. 
So I'm on Taryn Weingod 27. Um, that's my Instagram okay. handle. Okay. Instagram. Oh, you only have Instagram? Yeah, I only have All Instagram. Right. <laughs> okay. As you do, you know. You have to get Twitter and Facebook sometime, you know. People are going to want to find you and interact, no, I, right? I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> so bad at, yeah. I'm trying to be better at it, but okay. Instagram for now. Okay. No, cool. Taryn, thank you for your time. Thank you for thank coming you so in. Much, and good luck with the movie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. It's another episode of Talking Point with Stephen Taylor. Thank you very much for taking the time out and joining us today. Of course, make sure that you are interacting on social media uh, at Stephen Taylor Essay on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I have Instagram, yeah, no. And uh, of course, you can check out our Facebook page for the show, uh, facebook.com forward slash Talking Point. I will catch you back next week, same time, same place. Thank you, Kalani, and everyone else in the production team. Have a good one. God bless. Bye-bye.